Welcome back, everyone. I hope you're extra inquisitive today because, boy, have I got a lot for you to digest. This has come straight from the Russian Ministry of Defense as well as the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It is in regards to the military biological activities in Ukraine. So let's just get straight into it. They have released uh, something like seven slides with information that back up the claims or go a little bit further. Uh, to the actual text, which we'll go into just a moment. We have Robert Pope here quoted. We have a list of the diseases being studied in cooperation with the US military. We have the Bayraktar TB2 and the request made that could it deliver 20 liters of uh, aerosol, I think it was, along with pictures of the DJI Agras T30. When uh, these are two things that I've covered already previously in videos uh, a while back now. And the comment made about the DJI Agras was that it's an agricultural drone used usually for crop spraying, which in the context of Ukraine is uh, seemingly perfectly innocent because it is, as we are coming to understand now, uh, a hugely agricultural country, a breadbasket, in fact. So to have crop spraying equipment would be perfectly reasonable. But it's listed here as uh, a means of delivery, which it also could uh, potentially be if in the wrong hands. Moving on to the next slide, we have the US coordination of biological laboratories and research institutes in Ukraine. Oh boy, the Russian uh, briefing almost exclusively, I think it does, actually directly names the US Democratic Party as the ideologues behind all these nasty um, endeavors. And there we have George Soros, who is also behind many nefarious deeds. Joe Biden. Barack Obama and our dear friend Hillary Clinton. It then goes on with all the departments, uh, all the sponsors, the those responsible in Ukraine for carrying these out, and other friends of ours, some you might recognize, such as Pfizer, uh -huh, Moderna, oh, uh, along with Merck, which I know is another big one, and Gilead as well. Yeah, not really companies that have a track record of treating people particularly well, um, settling lawsuits, you know, uh, regarding damages and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's proven, in fact. Uh, going on to the next slide, we have German and Polish military and biological activity. So it wasn't just the United States uh, as part of the party. There is evidence to allege involvement of the Germans, which we have already covered. The Polish, not so much. Uh, that's that's new to me actually now. And it seems more of a, a veterinary role, domestic and wild animals in Ukraine, studying rabies uh, and so forth with some, some proof of payment there. Going on, we have oh, a much darker, carrying out experiments on mentally ill people. This appears to have taken place in Kharkiv. Uh, we'll get on to that in a little minute. Then we have uh, the the analysis of sanitary, epidemiological, and veterinary laboratories in Mariupol. Gosh, two very interest, interesting cities that have featured heavily in the news, Kharkiv and Mariupol, among others. Uh, here we have acts of destruction of microbial cultures, the 25th of the 2nd, 2022, uh, 25th of February, day after the special military operation. How convenient. Sorry, I'm, I'm blocking that there. Um, all links are in description, of course, so you can go through this at your leisure. I'll just stress that because we also have a lot of uh, documents that have been provided in the Yandex disk. They're one of the last documents that features an appeal for the delivery of humanitarian aid to the people of Kiev. That's very interesting looking humanitarian aid, isn't it? There, uh, basically NBC kits. Uh, of note, we have 7,000 of these Draeger DHS 7000 CM6 or SGE4003 type gas masks. These are pretty specialist and heavy duty along with filters. Full chemical protection suits as well, respirators and uh, hazmat equipment. And we're talking uh, down at the bottom here, there's some of the supplies, you know, um, we're talking huge numbers, 5 million uh, I believe that is for the respirators here, 100,000 of these gas masks. And uh, I believe potassium iodide tablets, iodine solution, Lugol solution for seven days for 1.7 million people. Now it could be argued that uh, this is again, perfectly reasonable given that as we see the documents featured here, which are also uh, supplied in the Yandex disc um, link, 
that these were based on fears that Russia would use such weapons. Uh, Russia is in turn claiming that it's it's for a false flag, which, yeah, take that or leave that. Uh, the Yandex Disk link, which of course I will include, is here, which features all these supporting documents. So the Russians have been frighteningly thorough. Let's get into some of the text. I'll try and be as brief as possible, but it is really meaty. I'll try and skip through as much as I can to give you a good idea, but I do advise that you actually go in and read this for yourself in your own time. So this is a briefing on the results of the analysis of documents related to the military biological activities of the United States on the territory of Ukraine. In his statement of April the 10th, 2022, Pope said that there is no reason to claim that research related to the development of biological weapons is taking place in Ukraine. He previously claimed that the Americans did not find biological weapons when they first started working with Ukraine, and they still haven't. In addition, Ukraine lacks the infrastructure to develop and produce biological weapons. The term biological weapons includes biological formulations that contain pathogenic microorganisms and toxins, as well as the means of delivery and use of said formulations. Now we're going back to that slide where we have a means of delivery, just, just one, for instance. In talks here, the pro priority of Ukrainian healthcare is socially significant diseases, such as HIV, among others, whereas US customers are interested in a completely different nomenclature, cholera, tularemia, plague, and hantaviruses. Very specific interests. As a result of the special military operation on the territory of Ukraine, facts of work with the specified pathogens, which are potential agents of biological weapons, have been revealed. On March 9th, three unmanned aerial vehicles equipped with 30 litre containers and equipment for spraying formulations were detected by Russian reconnaissance units in Kherson region. At the end of April, 10 more were found near Kakovka. Uh, it should be noted that the ideologues of US military biological activities in Ukraine are the leaders of the Democratic Party. Thus, through the US executive branch, a legislative framework for funding military biomedical research directly from the federal budget was formed. The scheme involves major pharmaceutical companies including Pfizer, Moderna, Merck and the US military affiliated company Gilead. The involvement of controlled non-governmental and biotechnological organizations and the increase in their revenues allows the leaders of the Democratic Party to generate additional campaign finance and hide its distribution. It should be noted that not only the US, but also a number of its NATO allies are implementing their military biological projects in Ukraine. The German government has decided to launch a national biosafety program, independent of Washington DC, starting in 2013. Twelve countries, including Ukraine, are involved in the program. New documents reveal that between 2016 and 2019 alone, three and a half thousand blood serum samples of citizens living in 25 regions of Ukraine were taken by military epidemiologists for the Bundeswehr Microbiology Institute. Documents obtained also show the involvement of Poland in Ukrainian biolaboratories, participation of the Polish Institute of Veterinary Medicine in research aimed at assessing the epidemiological threats and the spread of the rabies virus in Ukraine has been confirmed. Characteristically, the research in question was carried out jointly with the US-based Batiel Institute, a key contractor for the Pentagon. And here I was thinking that sounded perfectly innocent. The special military operation by Russian troops succeeded in obtaining additional information about the bio instance in Ukraine. For example, materials indicating the intentional use of a multi-drug resistant tuberculosis pathogen in 2020 to infect the population of the Slavyanoserbsky district of the LPR were examined, LPI's Lugansk uh, People's Republic. The flyers made in the form of counterfeit currency notes were infected with the tuberculosis agent and distributed to miners in Stepovoy village. The organizers of this crime took into account the behavior of children who have a habit of putting everything in their mouths and taking food 
with unwashed hands. According to the conclusion of the Lugansk Republican Sanitary and Epidemiological Station, the contamination of the notes was most likely carried out artificially as the material contains extremely dangerous strains of the pathogen in concentrations capable of ensuring infection and development of the tuberculosis process. In his conclusion, the chief doctor of the Lugansk Republican TB dispensary also notes that there are all signs of deliberate man-made contamination of the flyers with highly pathogenic biomaterial. We have received new information revealing details of the Pentagon's inhuman experiments on Ukrainian citizens in Psychiatric Hospital No. 1, Strelechia Village, Kharkov region. The main category of subjects was a group of male patients aged 40 to 60 years with a high stage of physical exhaustion. It goes into more detail there. The presence in the collection of pathogens that are uncharacteristic of veterinary medicine, such as typhoid, paratyphoid fever, and gas gangrene, is a cause for concern. This could indicate the laboratory's misuse and involvement in a military biological program. The Russian Ministry of Defense has information that provocations are being prepared to accuse the Russian armed forces of using weapons of mass destruction, followed by a Syrian scenario investigation to fabricate the necessary evidence and assign blame. We all know that the white helmets are already in Ukraine, as has been discussed at length. I've highlighted here organophosphorus poisoning antidotes raises concern. The supply to Ukraine, organophosphorus. I had to look this up. Uh, it's, uh, I found out this military medical science letter, uh, antihistamines promising antidotes of organophosphorus poisoning. Uh, it goes in to give an example um, of this, and we're talking things like um, sarin, uh, really nasty stuff. And that, I have to agree, is rather uh, concerning to say the least. Um, where is it? Ah, oh, yeah, the group comprises of insecticide, pesticides. Can I zoom in a bit more for you guys? Here we are. Insecticides, pesticides, nematicides, etc. In addition to deadly poison OP warfare chemicals like sarin and tabun. Thousands of casualties have been reported globally each year by the unintentional and intentional use of OP compounds. So that is what they are referring to with these uh, organophosphorus poisoning antidotes. I agree that <laughs> that does raise concern to have those requested. In 2022 alone, more than 220,000 amples of atropine, as well as preparations for special treatment and disinfection, were delivered from the USA at the request of the Ukrainian Ministry of Health. Thus, the information obtained confirms that the United States is implementing an offensive military biological program in Ukraine to study the possibility of forming controlled epidemics in specific territories. So, there we are. This is something that obviously they raised at the UN, and it was summarily dismissed. I think we can agree it was poo-pooed by, well, not to mention the United States, the UK, all the uh, collective West-leaning countries, and then the ones who are more sort of BRICS-leaning uh, were sufficiently concerned and calling for investigations into this. I am I'm very impressed with the level of detail that the Russians have gone into. At this point, I think we can all agree that whilst the allegation may be sensational, I don't believe that the Russians at this point will make unfounded claims. This is the sort of claims that we see coming out of Kiev and the collective West when used against Russia. They're very, very few times do they have substantial evidence to back them up. Here we have um, also included uh, public documents for you to look at yourself and cross-reference and presumably as much as possible research and verify the validity uh, I raise this to you. Uh, I'm sure it's not the most sensational topic going around, but this is oh, this is the, the ramifications of this are just mind boggling. We're having these um, these jabs, the data being released, which is being sort of hushed up in the other news, uh, and we're we're seeing the adverse reactions. And how many of these mRNA jabs originated from? Obviously, we've we've heard about Wuhan how much was contributed from Ukraine. We've heard about the level of blood serum uh, taken from citizens there. I mean, there's a lot of questions. If you want to put your tinfoil hat on, I'm sure you could go absolutely nuts and probably end up in uh, one of the psychiatric wards. 
But uh, there is a lot here that I believe warrants further investigation. And on that note, I'd like to thank uh, everyone on my Telegram, on emails, uh, Twitter as well, who've reached out to me with various uh, material and stuff. This is slowly becoming not just a one-man operation, but I'm kind of standing on the shoulder of giants here. Uh, certainly in the case of the Russian Ministry of Defense with this material, this is certainly not something I can take credit for. Uh, but uh, yes, my job here is to bring it to your awareness and by all means, let me know in the comments what you think. Is it all rubbish or is it something that we should really wake up and maybe also in the US and other countries, Germany, Poland, hold your representatives accountable for, demand answers for? What is this? Is it true? You know, if it's not true, demonstrate why you know, give us this stuff. There needs to be this open democratic process, um, transparent process, especially in light of the, not just the weight of these allegations, but the evidence that clearly backs them up. The Russians are dotting the I's and crossing the T's. As we've said before, Putin's a lawyer and he does things by the book. Presumably this ethos runs through the other ministries as well. And their, um, their attention to detail is as sharp as President Putin's. I will end this here. Um, I am going to study this even further as I recommend you do because there is a lot to get your head around. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.